everyone. My name is Insaf. I'm a student from Tunisia, and I'm presently finishing my PhD at the University of Quebec in Abitibi, Témiscamingue. And I have the honor today to present to you my thesis project entitled Establishment of Intercropping Species in Organic Annual Crops and Impact on Weed Control. This work is under the direction of Vincent Poirier and with the contribution of Daphne Touzan. First of all, before defining what these intercropping species are, we must know that nowadays it has the necessity and the need to develop agronomic techniques, irrespective of the environment at low input level. So to encourage changes in soil management on organic cereals, we find among the most practiced uh, alternative, the work dissolve, the use of phytosanitary products in a recent way, and also the use of intercropping species which also have a lot of beneficial, as in particular the physical or chemical properties of the soil, on the burying capacity, on the biological activity, also on nitrogen fixation at soil level, and we find too on biodiversity and weed control. So several studies have highlighted the interest and the understanding of the intercropping species. So you have to know, in fact, that the typology of intercropping species differs as on the temporal scale as on the spatial scale. As we see in the figure, on the left, we have the lines in red that represents the intercropping and the circles in green, it's the main culture. Here, it represents only where the species occupies the whole plot. In other case, it could have been on one row out of two. Everything depends on the objective of the farmer. So uh, we can uh, see the difference on the temporal scale, as I said, so it can be uh, those put in, in the in month of May, um, it seems like on the sowing with the main crop and also in June with tillering. What brings us to talk about a new approach, which is the functional approach. And to define this approach, we must ask ourselves the question, is that on what level we must focus to better understand the behavior of the species that make up the ecosystem faced with changes in the environment. For a long time, biologists have used that, uh, what is called taxonomy to identify plants to classify them, to also study their diversity. But this is not enough. To understand the behavior of plant species, whether it's uh, herbaceous or woody plants in the face of climate change. This is why for 10, uh, 10 years, there have been a new so-called functional approach. This approach is based on the functional traits of the species. And traits are all characteristics. Uh, physiological, phenological, morphology, easily miserable at the scale of the individual and it helps us to learn uh, about the behavior of the species. As you see in the figure uh, on the right, on the left side, there, there are some examples of functions defined at the level of the individual. While, other, or, um, while the right part of the same figure represents example of its functional marks, namely the mass of seeds, the size of the, um, the leaves, the root density. For example, to understand the, um, the, inter uh, the intersection of light, we measure the height of the plant. So what brings me now to talk uh, about the objective of this project and the first thing is was to study the impact of different intercropping species in cereal production on weed community in Polari Abitibi for the year of 2018 and 2020. And to compare the effects of intercropping treatments on individual trade values measured at the species and community level. I will briefly now um, go to the methodological part. The present study was carried out, as I said earlier, in Poulari and Abitibi with a farmer in large organic uh, oat production and another farmer who also produce organic wheat. We have placed four treatment modalities. The um, crimson clover, the white clover, the sweet clover, and also a control plot. 
the four quadrants were placed on each plot, mean on each treatment method. So on each quadra, we had the identification of the species. It's mean a taxonomic identification. Also the identification of the percentage of cover, not only of the species, but also of all biomass present in the quadra. So we had also measure the functional traits. So there are six functional traits that we have selected. The leaf area, the specific leaf area, the height, the clutter, the leaf dry matter content, and the dry matter content uh, of the plant. These are traits were measured at the individual level, and also we weighted them at the community level, which brings us to talk about the community weighted mean. According to the mass ratio hypothesis, which uh, states that the species with the highest biomass contribute more to the functioning of the community. And this is in fact called the aggregate traits, which were subsequently calculated for each quadra based on the coverage rate values determined uh, during uh, followeristic surveys, as well as the trade values measured for each species. So according to this equ um, equation, which is the TI, it's mean the, the value of the trade multiplied for the PA, which is the relative coverage rate of the species. This will give us an idea of the distribution of plants and also on the functional structure. So I will now turn to our first result on the variation in the structure of species over the two years, 2019 and 2020, as you see on the table. Over the two years, as we see the specific richness, and when I speak of specific richness, that is to um, say the number of species and not the abundance. There is uh, a significant difference, like we see between the year of 2019 and the year of 2020. And it's still in terms of specific richness. It has 16 species for the year of 2019 and 24 species identified for the year 2020. On the other hand, uh, no significant difference if I compare to the scale of each treatment modality. But if we see, on the other hand, if I compare the treatment, um, the trifilium incarnatum compared to the control plot, we see a significant difference, which is shown by the letter A and D uh, at the level of the percentage of coverage. In fact, we see more coverage at the level of the trifilium incarnatum treatment than the control plot. In terms of the specific richness, we have more species uh, that were identified on the control against the uh, trifilium incarnatum. What explains this, in fact, that the trifilium incarnatum species is a dominant, which managed, in fact, to eliminate the presence of weeds. I will go now to show you the results which only uh, concern the year of 2020 as uh, seen in the figure. As I said earlier, on the Trifilium incarnatum, we had an enormous abundance compared to the other uh, intercropping species. And at the level of weeds, as, we, as you see, it's more pronounced at the level of the control plot treatment, where we see many weeds that have been identified. So, which now brings me to talk about the functional structure of species community. As you can see here on the three figure that I have selected, only three functional traits, the specific leaf area, the high and the leaf dry matter content. There are, uh, these are first of all aggregate traits and not individual trait. That is um, to say traits of the whole community of species. As we see on the box plots, this represents the distribution of values for all communities. For the first functional trait, we see in fact that the specific leaf area is very high at the level of trifilium incarnatum compared to the other treatments. In relation to the high, we have not, not said the same thing. The value of the high, it's high, there are more represent at the level of the trifilium incarnatum. 
On the other hand, at the level of the leaf dry matter content, as we see on the box plot, the highest values, they were more showing at the level of the control plot and also at the level of the Melulotus officinalis. This leads us to say that they made a positive correlation between specific leaf area and height and negative correlation on the leaf dry matter content. To finish what I have just shown you in terms of result, there is a pronounced evolution of the specific richness from the year of 2019 to the year 2020. And on the functional response of the values of the species, we, we could notice that as you see in the figure, I will take case by case, for the Trifilium incarnatum, we see that it is positively correlated with the highest values in specific leaf area, in height and in clutter. That said that the species found in its treatment are species with the strategy of acquisition and not of conservation. Moreover, in terms of specific richness, given the Trifilium incarnatum, it turns out to be a dominant species. Therefore, less number of weed species present in this treatment. In fact, the more dense the sown convert, the less weed cover is important. With a coverage threshold of 50% of the sown species beyond which weed coverage is always less than 25%. Unlike Trifilium repens, it is more correlated with very high values of specific leaf area and the leaf dry matter content. For the contour plot and the Trifilium officinalis, it turns out that they are more correlated with the highest values of leaf dry matter content. So we can say that the species found in this treatment are species with a conservation strategy. So to conclude, that to adapt this different treatment in agroecosystem, the first thing that is very important to, is the choice of the species to sow, which is linked to the mean and objectives of the farmer. And second thing is important is the management of this species. Also, you should know that there are other uh, factors that came into play and that I have not addressed them in this presentation, like the analysis of the properties of the soil. That will play a very important role. For the perspectives, it's, it is necessary to note that there is fundamental importance between trees and ecosystem services. Thank you for your attention. Hope you liked my presentation and that you find this intercropping species a method in need to develop in organic cereals. Thank you. And now we are joined by uh, Insaf Shida. <clears throat> so uh, my first question for you, Insaf, is uh, when was the sowing done or the planting for that project? Uh, you might be muted there, Insaf. Do you hear me now? Oh. I, I don't know if it's working. It's work? Yep. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, we did the, the um, uh, at May, in May. Okay, so it was uh, planted in May? Yeah. Perfect. Um, oh, do you have any of the yield data for anything that you planted there? The, the what? I cannot Sorry. understand. What did you say now? Uh, the yield data. Um, that's OK. We can move on to another question. Okay. Um, so why did you end up selecting those six uh, functional traits that you looked at? Um, we selected the six functional traits. It's because it helped us to understand uh, much better the behavior of weed species. 
in their growth and also in um, on intercropping to see their strategy of uh, of adaptation of um, to see the strategy of the intercropping species of uh, their adaptation in acquisition or in conserve resource for example um, the higher specific leaf area mean the, um, the more species acquire resource. Also, uh, it's mean like the, the species um, at rapid growth are particularly uh, characterized by high value of specific leaf area, uh, as well as by intense of uh, respiratory and uh, photosynthetic activity. Uh, and we select to the the, the treat the function of dry American because it um, it helps us to understand the the strategy of um, the species in uh, conserve resources. Thanks. Um, so, are there any other traits uh, that we could target that would improve uh, soil properties? Uh, certainly, uh, there are other traits that were not addressed, uh, like in this presentation, as uh, the root traits, uh, and this trait uh, could contribute to uh, to a better understanding of the um, of the influence exerted by by the roots plant on soil properties to to like improve the the stability of aggregates. Uh, so we can refer to different mechanisms like the density uh, and uh, missile if uh, there are also um, there are also a chemical traits that uh, uh, that contribute in, uh, in uh, to improve the properties of the soil like um, the the elementary roots composition uh, the concentration of root carbon nitrogen uh, Thank you. Um, one more question. Uh, did you account for any of the nitrogen that was added by um, any of those plants that were growing? For my uh, my PhD, we didn't work with uh, we didn't use the um, the um, the trait um, the root traits. We uh, we just used the the trait function of uh, the area of plant. The higher the clutter, the specific leaf area. So um, that's why I said that I didn't address, um, we didn't um, uh, board or use the, the root traits. So um, I don't know if I, I answered your question about the uh, const uh, concentration of root nitrogen. Sure. And uh, is your project complete? And uh, if so, uh, where would people be able to find uh, any of the final results from that? Uh, I, it's my last year. In, I'm in the last year of my PhD, so uh, it will be for the um, the last of the year. I it will be uh, it will be published. So for 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 this moment, um, I didn't I didn't finish yet the the whole of the result and the work. Okay, perfect. Well, thanks a lot for joining us, Insa. You're welcome.